Hello, here is the setup that I'm thinking of doing, or that I am doing, for my aquaponics garden. Um, I'm going to use a fish tank that we weren't using, it was just sitting unused. And here are my parts. This I found in the irrigation supply place, and uh, it is a half inch piece of... Uh, I forget what they call it, but basically it's uh, it's just you can you can adjust this for whatever size you need. So I thought it was a pretty good idea for what we're using it for because I could adjust it and just cut off where I needed it to be for inside of this pot or planter. And uh, what I did is I drilled a three-quarter inch hole through here and I did put a piece of, uh, or a washer on top of here. So then this is going to, the three-quarter inch hole was actually pretty tight. So it almost threads tightly down onto there. But I don't trust that to be a leak-proof seal by any means. And then, let me bring you in closer so you can see. Okay, so my half inch pipe is going to be up inside of here, straight up. That's going to be where the water flows around and exits the planter. So, I need to put two washers on the bottom of here. And uh, I didn't really get the right size of washers. So they're going to be a little tough to put on because they're nice and snug, very, very snug. Which is not a bad thing. And then I have a half inch fitting here that's threaded on one side and then there's a slip fitting which would normally be glued on the other side. I don't think I'm going to glue it though, I guess I could, but I don't think I'll really have to. Okay, so let's tighten that down. Okay, so that's tightened down and that's going to just go down straight into the fish tank. Alrighty, now we are going to mark the... I should have said on this too that there's going to be a pipe to help with the siphon which will go into here and um, I'll have to cut it at some length which I'll experiment with to see what length actually works the best. Okay, so this is the part that's going to create the suction. This has to be a waterproof, um, waterproof or yeah, airproof. This is what creates the airproof seal to create the suction. So this needs to be a little bit taller, but not much taller than the the riser pipe here. So I'm going to put it right beside the pipe and mark the top of it. And then over here we have a, a lid, a cap that will go on the top of it. And let's pretend this is the riser pipe here. That riser pipe is right to the, there's a little lip in there where the pipe's gonna go. So there will be still plenty of room on the, on the top of here because it's rounded for the water to flow. So I am lucky enough to have a pipe cutter. So I can put this pipe in my pipe cutter and get a nice straight cut. Of course you could use a chop saw or a hack saw, however you want to do it. It doesn't have to be that great. But it's fun to use a tool if you have it. I found this thing at a antique shop or some kind of shop. Used stuff shop a long time ago. And uh, I bought it. 
can never have too many pipe cutters. here too that you can ream out the inside of the pipe get the rough edges off okay so I got the edges reamed off and I marked on here how far the cap needed to come down to be seated properly and I slipped it down and I did that on film but my camera cut off I guess it's not really film anymore, is it? I did that on digital media, but my camera cut off because I think my storage inside the camera is too low. So I switched to a card so I could continue. So here is the bell siphon top. And that's going to go over the riser tube, I guess you call that. And for the water to be able to flow, it's going to flow from here when this is full, flow into here then it's going to flow up and it's going to move up as the water fills up the up the planter and um, the water is going to go up until it gets to the top in here then it's going to flow over here and it's going to fill up that tube and create a siphon so um, next thing I need to do is drill some holes in here which is boring so I won't bore you with the pictures of doing that Okay, so here is all the system I'll put together and sandwiched in my garage. Let me show you that bell housing, the outside of the bell siphon that I did. Um, let's focus on there. There you go. Uh, so I put holes around the bottom, sort of randomly. And uh, it was running okay, but it was having a hard time shutting off the siphon. Uh, because probably, well, I'm not sure exactly why because I haven't thought about the uh, physics of it yet. But what I did is I took one of the holes and I took the hole up a little farther. And then, then I angled it up into the pipe too. Thinking that when the water drops down, that would allow some air to get in there. And uh, that would allow the siphon to break because the air would get in there and break the siphon. So that's what I did. And uh, since I did that, it hasn't jammed again. So that may have taken care of it, um, or it may not have. Some people put a pipe around from the top and they put a pipe down and they stop it like right here, a little bit above the holes so that when the water drains down, the air would be able to get in and break the siphon. Uh, also, what I didn't show you is my 4-inch pipe that I put for the housing around the outside. And um, I just drilled. Don't know if you can see it or not. Anyways, I cut slits in that 4-inch pipe every half inch or so, sort of randomly. Um, I wasn't real scientific about it. And that will um, let the water seep in and it won't let the rocks in to jam up the siphon. And plus I can take the uh, top of this bell off anytime I want to to make adjustments or what have you. So as you can see the water's filled up now and uh, it is overflowing on the filler pipe. And I did go back to the hardware store to get the four inch, type, four inch pipe and that pipe that I used is an irrigation riser pipe. And what it's designed for is so that they can put it in the ground and then cut it to what level they need with the top of the surface of the soil and screw their fitting for the irrigation onto the top of that so that the um, irrigation fitting will be flush with the top of the soil. So it worked great for this application. And uh, let me show you how the siphon works. I'll put the tube on and it'll start siphoning probably immediately. Um... Listen and you can, there it goes. 
and when it starts the siphon have a pipe going down into the tank and it blows bubbles way down deep into the tank and the goldfish actually seem to enjoy it they swim out and get in the current the water is all cloudy in the tank still from all the activity on top uh, here's a water pump that I had just uh, one of the aquariums that was laying around so I'm using that and I put a, a tubing onto it it comes up on the other side on the far side and so it continuously pumps water down into the tank into the planter I should say you can see the water flow in there so it's continuously pumping water and the pump is or the siphon is now filling back up actually the siphon didn't break because it's still going just a little bit you can actually get used to hearing the noises of when the siphon stops and when it starts And I had to uh, adjust like the pipes and stuff to experiment with it for the length of the discharge pipe. And I also put a pipe inside the riser tube. You can see in there there's a little a plastic tube that I put in there just to make the diameter less so that the siphon started easier. So I had to play around with it and do some things to get it to work. So then I planted some lettuce, some red leaf lettuce, some regular green leaf lettuce. Uh, I planted some spinach. There's a little one. There's a bigger spinach. Some cilantro. And arugula. So it's going to be interesting to see if that stuff keeps growing. And if it enjoys it inside in the house. I'm going to get a light to put on it. Probably put a light on it tomorrow have a, a large, pretty high wattage uh, fluorescent light for it. And I only have six fish in there, so I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. Might have to test the water and see if the nitrates are going up and how it's, how it's going to work. It might take a while for the uh, system to get balanced. That might be partly why the water is a little um, cloudy too. So thanks for watching, have a blessed day, and I will see you next time. Okay, it is the 21st of December, which means that the, the I have had this set up for two weeks, and uh, it seems to be doing pretty well. I've actually eaten a few leaves off of it, and the lettuce has been growing. The spinach has been growing slowly. There's another little spinach on that side. The arugula has not been doing a whole lot, but it's hanging in there. And the cilantro is not doing a whole lot. It's hanging in there. I threw a clove of garlic in there, and it sprouted out quite a bit. And I put an avocado seed even in there just for fun. See what that would do. And that's about it, but also, as you can see, the water has cleared up a lot. There's the siphon starting, and the fish really seem to enjoy that. They seem like they like to swim through the current that's created from the siphon. But the water is clear as it gets filtered by going through the rocks. So... I would say it's a success and I will keep you updated thanks for watching oh I should say also um, the light that I have I just have it thrown up there really I need to put it so that it's right on top of the uh, growing area 
but I just have it on a string actually. Let me show you to you. Oh, and I also have a timer that turns it on at six on the mo in the morning and off at six at night. So there's the light. This is the light bulb that Ray at Praxis uses in his voodoo garden inside growing room. And uh, like I said, I just sort of have it thrown up there. I need to put it so that it's this way above the plants. And uh, then I'll be all set up, ready to just sit back and watch things grow. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Blessings to each of you. And uh, that's it. Bye.